Hi, good morning. Um, I'm pleased to introduce uh, Nick John. Nicholas John is a visiting fellow at the Department of Media and Communication at the London School of Economics and a Kreitman postdoctoral fellow at the Department of Communication at Ben Gurion University. His PhD was a study of the arrival of the internet to Israel. And this summer, he will be joining the Department of Communication at the Hebrew University of Jerusalem. Thank you very much. What? <laughs> OK, let's plug that back in and start. It's OK. And we're back. Are we? Yeah. OK. Uh, right, good morning. Um, so I'm going to talk for a bit about um, sharing and the word share and the uh, rhetoric of the word share and practices of sharing. Um, and um, well, I guess later on you'll understand why uh, Sinai and, uh, and Nat and Adi asked me to, to talk about um, my work. But why talk about sharing in the first place? Well, it seems to me that we're in the middle of a sharing turn. Um, where we live in a, in a so-called culture of sharing, uh, where um, this, refers to, this refers to online sociability, um, where what we do on Facebook is called sharing, uh, which is what I'll talk about today mostly. But also, um, it can refer also to the emergence of different sharing initiatives like bike sharing and car sharing, uh, couch surfing. Um, a whole set of uh, practices, new practices, well, new old practices that come under the uh, heading of the sharing economy or collaborative consumption. Um, so sharing, I would argue, is an important contemporary keyword. Uh, and what I've been doing over the last uh, couple of years is looking at it quite closely and kind of seeing what, um, what comes out of that. So, before I really get going, perhaps a couple of uh, definitions or some of the meanings of um, sharing. Now, fortunately, I mean, I'm, I'm very happy to be talking in English. I mean, it's you know, a bit easier than in Hebrew. I sound cleverer in English, which is never a bad thing in a university. But also because I don't need to deal with uh, the Hebrew of sharing, which has for which there's at least two words. And it what I want to say about sharing in English doesn't all work in Hebrew, which is in itself will be a subject of a paper at some point. Um, but uh, for now, English. So um, the original uh, earliest meaning of sharing um, that we know of is, to, is sharing as division, as physically uh, cutting something up, right? And that's when we, you know, we share our, I know, a child shares his candy bar or something. So that's sharing as division. It's a zero-sum game. If I share something with someone, I have less of it for myself. Um, there's also a sense of sharing where um, things are shared. Um, so here we might have students living in, in uh, sharing an apartment, and so the apartment is shared. Uh, so the apartment is divided between the two of them, but yet it remains whole. There are other things that can be shared that aren't necessarily physical or material, such as beliefs uh, or a fate. Um, so those aren't a zero-sum game, right? There's no limit to the number of people who can share a belief in a certain god or ideology or whatever it may be. Uh, and there's a third meaning of sharing, which is much newer, and the Oxford English Dictionary only the earliest quotation, the earliest reference it gives for this is the beginning of the 20th century. And this is sharing as communication, sharing as a particular type of talk where we share our emotions. And this um, is originally associated with a group of Christians in uh, England called the Oxford Group. And what they would do is sit in a circle and share their sins with one another for the sake of redemption. And if that sounds a bit like Alcoholics Anonymous, that's because Alcoholics Anonymous uh, was inspired by the Oxford group and, and exactly adopted those practices. And as you know, Alcoholics Anonymous is actually is quite a religious organization. And, um, so, uh, so sharing has uh, multiple meanings. And um, in this sense, it is a uh, homonym. Uh, it's a homonym, a word with more than one meaning. Now, there are two types of homonyms that uh, linguists talk about. There's um, 
a type of homonym where the two meanings are entirely unrelated. So a little English pop quiz. What's the word? Skate. OK, so we've got a roller skate and the fish skate, and the, the, it's the same word, but the meanings are entirely unrelated. There are also homonyms where the meanings are related. So here we have a mouth, and we have the mouth of a river, and obviously uh, the meanings are related. Now, with sharing, uh, I want to say that sharing is a, is a polysemic homonym, uh, which isn't all that important. Um, the, the, jargon, but I do think that because it's a polysemic homonym, that's one of the things that, a bit too dark, that makes it um, uh, such a powerful metaphor. Um, okay, so, so far some meanings and definitions of sharing. I first got interested in sharing when I noticed that um, it's the word that um, that's describes how we participate in Web 2.0. Okay, this uh, share here on Facebook now, um, it, don't, it doesn't say share like that, uh, quite like that anymore, but um, that is uh, from Facebook, or this is from um, Flickr, um, even in things like um, Windows Messenger, uh, share something new, it says there, or if I want to send a link to a YouTube clip to someone, so I, I'm sharing that, and there's a button that says share. And in fact, countless websites um, have some kind of share button, don't they, which enables us to uh, bring the page to the attention of other people. So, um, so that's a, a meaning now of, of the word share. But when did um, when did the word sharing become the word to describe these activities? Uh, and what does it mean in this context, in the context of Web 2.0? And what rhetorical force does it have in this regard? So um, these are questions that sparked uh, my imagination, and I thought I'll try and go and answer them. Um, so how did, I, how did I do that? Well, I compiled a list of um, 44 uh, social network sites, the largest, the historically most significant social network sites. And I looked at how they used the word share over the, over the years 1999 to 2010. I compiled the list of social network sites um, by using uh, Alexa, by using Wikipedia, and by drawing on a article by uh, Dana Boyd and Alice Marwick from 2007 or 2008, um, which has been cited over 3,700 times. So I think it's a pretty uh, reliable, hopefully, at least for those 3,700 people who have cited it, including me, of course, that it's a, a, a reliable source there. They have a, a, a nice timeline of social network sites. Um, so I've got 44 social network sites, um, and um, I sat down with the uh, Wayback Machine um, and no other useful tools apart from plugging in the URL and then uh, clicking through. But I didn't click through, didn't look at every day of, of every, uh, for all of these websites, but what I did do was I looked at, I jumped ahead in periods of months. Um, and if the site had changed, I would uh, um, take a screenshot or copy the text and then uh, um, jump forward to the next month. And what I was looking for was uh, uh, the word share or sharing um, or shared even. Uh, and so I collected uh, all of these either by taking screenshots or copying images or copying the text. Um, but, and then for the analysis, I put all of that into Atlas TI, where I could uh, code all of the different uses of the word share. Um, because I copied a lot of text, like that was also searchable. My corpus of data was searchable. Uh, so I could uh, uh, code all of these different instances of sharing and then create families of codes and, um, I mean, you know, the kind of procedures of grounded theory. Uh, so that's what I did, yeah. Just the front pages, because I mean, I sometimes where there was a drastic 
redesign of the page. I would look into the About page or the FAQ page, but I didn't really include them in my analysis because not all of the sites had them available, and so it would mean that my analysis wouldn't be standard across all of the all of the social network sites. But I did go into them where um, uh, so sometimes. I'll show you. It's not just the share buttons. It's the way they talk. It's not. In fact, it's not really the share buttons at all, because the share buttons are on other sites to bring you to the social network sites. It's the way that the sites describe themselves and what you can do on the site. Right. I'll show you. I've got plenty of examples. I'll show you exactly what I mean. Um, okay. So that's uh, that's what I did, and I'll show you what I found. But before that, I want to just. Um, put this up. Okay. So I uh, started, my interest in sharing started with Web 2.0. It quickly spread into sharing economies, which I mentioned before, Airbnb, Zipcar, Car2Go, and uh, all of these uh, phenomena, but also into um, uh, the therapeutic narrative or our therapeutic culture. I'm thinking of the work of Eve Luz, um, who I guess I should also mention was my PhD supervisor, uh, and her work on the therapeutic culture and, and the type of communication that goes on between intimates, which is called sharing. And she doesn't talk about that, but she, but, but she does use the word sharing to, descri uh, to describe it, because that, that's what it's called. Um, and in my larger project on sharing, what I'm doing is uh, linking these spheres together and hopefully saying something about the sharing self or, or a culture of sharing, uh, not in a... Um, kind of uncritical, oh, isn't it lovely everyone's sharing stuff kind of way, but obviously kind of from a critical perspective um, uh, as well, which I'll, I'll hint at um, towards the end. Okay. So I've collected all these uh, uses of the word share in social network sites between 1999 and 2010. Obviously, um, not all of the social network sites were around in 1999 and in 2010. In fact, only one was. Uh, I'm pretty sure only one was. Um, and I uh, sat down, read through them all several, several times, and then several more times, and these were what I, this is, uh, this is what I found. Um, and what I found was that the meaning of the word sharing has taken on, uh, as, as the word sharing has taken on a new meaning in the context of Web 2.0. Um, uh, and in the most general terms, sharing in the context of Web 2.0 means participating in Web 2.0. Um, but what I want to do in particular is point to three, uh, three characteristics of uh, sharing in, uh, in this context. So the first um, uh, uh, category, if you want, of the use of the word sharing in Web 2.0, I call fuzzy objects of sharing. Concrete objects of sharing, by way of contrast, are, um, are uh, 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 objects of sharing where we know exactly what is being shared. So for instance, um, in here in, in 2004 from, uh, from, the web, from the social networks like Multiply, share interesting websites. Okay, this is a concrete object of sharing. Or um, we might see on YouTube, share your videos. Um, it's clear what you're sharing. It's, uh, quite concrete. Um, share thoughts. Um, I want to say that that is also a concrete object of sharing. It's quite clear what our thoughts are. Likewise, our opinions. So even if it's not a digital version of, of something from the analog world, like, say, a video, uh, still that's a um, concrete object of sharing. But what we start to see is that um, we start to see um, terms like share your life, uh, share your world, share your real self, uh, or, or the real you. Um, and here, I want to say that the object of sharing is fuzzy. It's not clear, it's not obvious what sharing your life entails in the way that it is obvious what sharing video entails. So this also might be true of um, this from, from Windows Live, share, uh, share your world. Um, a couple of points about fuzzy objects of sharing. Uh, one is that sharing your world involves both uh, practices of distribution and communication, which is a way that I like to um, see, I like to kind of divide different uh, types of sharing. So sharing as distribution is when I share my candy with someone or when I share uh, my uh, 
car with someone in a, in a carpool, for instance. And sharing is communication is when I tell someone something. Um, obviously, it's not you know clear-cut uh, distinction, but 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 roughly it works, I think. So, um, but sh when you share your world, you're both uh, distributing and communicating. You're sharing photos, you're distributing photos, and you're telling people what you've been up to. Uh, so you're sharing as you're you're sharing in the sense of uh, communication. And the rhetoric of sharing here in, in share your life, share your world, implies that I think that you shouldn't be living your life alone. You should be, uh, you should be sharing your life. And that's in, uh, in, in both senses, both in the sense that um, uh, you should do things with other people, you should share experiences with other people, and you should tell other people about what you've been doing. Um, and how are we meant to share our world or share our lives? Um, well, with email, photos, movies, video chat. So um, through computer-mediated communication, in other words. Now, uh, significantly for my argument that there's a new meaning of sharing appearing in the context of Web 2.0, um, the terms share your world uh, uh, and share your life do not appear on any social network sites before 2007. Uh, and so that, you know, this is something I could find by um, looking through the, uh, uh, the pages on the Wayback Machine. So those are fuzzy objects of sharing. That's a new usage of sharing that goes back only about six years. Uh, there's also a relatively new usage of the word share where um, the word is used with no object at all. Okay, if I've just talked about fuzzy and concrete objects of sharing, here there's, uh, uh, the word share is used without any object at all. And what I mean are things like this. Facebook, uh, this is from Facebook. Facebook helps you connect and share with the people in your life. Okay, just share. It doesn't say what or uh, or um, from uh, MySpace. I come back MySpace. Uh, thank you. Um, follow, get the latest, share. Uh, and I think I've got one more as well. Um, Perf spot. It turned out to be a hard word, so they use it. Uh, you know, to Not maybe, it absolutely, 100% yes, so certainly. And I, I, can I think that even those who are uh, behind uh, those uh, SNS don't uh, exactly know what they mean. They just like uh, drop it. That's like name dropping. They uh, name drop the share inside their, uh, you know. Uh, there's no doubt about that whatsoever. Okay. I mean, no doubt about that whatsoever. But people don't have to really understand what they're doing the way that we might understand what yes, they're doing in course. order for us to talk about what they're doing. So would you um, say if someone from about 1900 heard just share without anything, would he ask, share what? Yes. I, in fact, well, the use of the word share with no object of sharing doesn't appear in social network sites until 2005. So. Quite possibly, if you said to someone in 2000, share, they would look at you slightly blankly. Um, they might know what uh, photo sharing is or file sharing is, but um, yeah, in this sense of participating in Web 2.0, this, this, uh, this is new. Um, and to me, it suggests that this is the point at which social network sites can assume that their users are familiar enough with what sharing means, uh, that they can just say, share. Or, you know, they can just have the imperative, yes. share, with a question mark. You know, do it. This is what, share. Um, yeah? It also may mean that omitting the term share would, would be, would be uh, uh, almost uh, ostracizing the public. No, it's not ostracizing the public. But, for instance, websites where you see the word share far less are um, LinkedIn and Viadeo. Viadeo is another professional network site. And in LinkedIn, you don't share. Or at least you didn't in the, the years that I was looking at it. And in Via Deo, they have one. They changed their website at some point where, where they did have share, and it really um, it really grated, because it isn't what you do with professional networks sharing. It's uh, so. Um, but there's no doubt that there was a point in the mid 2000s where you have to say what you're doing is sharing. There's there's no doubt. And and in Facebook you can see it. Um, it's uh, October. Um, 2004 or five, I think, when they when they um, introduced the share button. That might have been 2006 even, uh, and then 2006, October 2006, and then you can just see there's someone in the company has said, right, guys, from now on everything is sharing, and they've got blog posts and it's sharing is caring and share and and, and 
you, it just all of a sudden the word appears all over the site. Uh, it was clearly a strategic decision. Um, okay, uh, so share without an object means participate in this site. Um, I want to say about the meaning of the word share in this context that it's both clear, so we know we understand it, but it's also very dense. So the word share can, sorry. 2007? No, earlier than that. Okay, it doesn't matter. Uh, I've got it in here somewhere. Uh, it doesn't matter. So clear, the, the meaning of the word share is clear and dense. Um, it's clear because we, we understand exactly what we're meant to do, and it's dense because it now, can, it now refers to tweeting, writing an, uh, up, a, a book review on Amazon. The rubric there says share your thoughts, um, and it refers to status updating and photo sharing and tweeting and commenting on a blog and checking in as a location. All of these things are sharing. Um, and again, coming back to my distinction between distribution and communication, some of these social network sites are focused on distribution, some more on communication. The most successful of them aggressively <coughs> encourage both uh, communication and um, uh, communicative and distributive practices of sharing. A final category of sharing, um, of, or of the use of the word sharing, uh, is, um, is the following. We can look at the same website at different points in time and see that practices that are now called sharing were not always called sharing within that same website. So if we look at um, Bebo from 2005, Bebo is a social network site that mostly popular among British teenagers. Um, there's a long list of things that you can do uh, on Bebo. And, um, one of them is share photos, that's fine. I mean, that's a kind of uh, quite old, relatively established uh, use of the word sharing. But all the other things, you know, write and draw on other people's whiteboards, keep in contact, uh, um, learn more about people you see. This is, uh, those are the ways that, 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 that what you can do on Bebo is described. But in 2007, Bebo is a social media network where friends share their lives. Um, so, <coughs> same practices, the site the hasn't changed. Are the categories overlapping? Sorry? Are the categories overlapping? What do you mean? Ah. Uh, I mean... Uh, the fuzzy and the no object. Yeah, well, it can't be a fuzzy, it can't have no, a fuzzy no, object no, and no uh, object. It can, wasn't sharing, yeah, yeah, yeah. Is, and yes, now yes, yes. Of, no object of sharing. It yes, can be yes, both. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, so here, yes, this is a fuzzy object of sharing. Um, or we can see the... Uh, ah, and here's 2009, invite friends to share the experience. Um, or the social network site, Photolog. Um, 2002, uh, see what's up with your friends and family. Or, you know, upload photos, make it easy for friends and family to see what's up with you. That's 2002. In 2007, share your world with the world. Um, or one more example. Um, Live Journal, which is the site that existed in 1999 and still exists today. It says here, so come and create your very own live journal. Let the world know the story of your life as it happens. And then in brackets, whether they want to or not, maybe kind of prefiguring a, a, kind of a popular critique of um, uh, Web 2.0. So let, your, let the world know the story of your life as it happens. So that's a really wordy way of saying um, what they say in 2006. Share your thoughts and photos with your friends. Share with one, a few or many. Or in 2007, uh, Life Journal lets you express yourself, share your life, connect with your friends online. So we've gone from uh, no use of the word share to uh, um, uh, concrete objects of sharing and now to fuzzy objects of sharing within the same, um, within the very same website. Uh, okay, so clearly, you know, the point is that the functionality hasn't changed, but the way in which the functionality is described has, uh, has changed over the years. Um, okay, uh, we mustn't forget that um, the websites that I've been talking about are, um, are commercial entities, uh, and their objective is to make money, whereas um, sharing, whether of uh, emotions or of stuff, is a non-commercial activity, right? I mean, in a way, sharing is um, the opposite uh, to um, commercial transactions. Uh, and, and so, you know, there are fruitful comparisons to be made with, uh, with the gift, um, with sharing and gifting. Um, so, 
so there's a kind of contradiction uh, between sharing and the commercial orientation of the social network sites on which we are sharing. Uh, and this contradiction, I think, helps the social network sites to mystify the relations between um, the site and its users. In, uh, uh, and I'd like to show that in, in a couple of ways. First of all, um, there's an idea that the more we share, uh, the more we share, the better the world will be. And this we can see in the letter that Facebook attached to its IPO um, filing in January of last year. And Mark Zuckerberg wrote here that Facebook was not originally created to be a company. It was built to accomplish a social mission, to make the world more open and connected. People sharing more, no object of sharing, people sharing more, even with just their close friends or families, creates a more open culture and leads to a better understanding of the lives and perspectives of others. So here, sharing is represented as a mechanism for improving human relations and making the world a better place. Um, so, um, it's, so here, sharing is a communicative act, but it's uh, not just any communicative act. It's the communicative act on which our therapeutic culture is based. And we can see that, for instance, in um, this uh, quotation from a book called Talking American by Donald Carbo, which is Donald Carbo, which was published in, I think, 1988. And it's about Donahue, the American talk show. Um, and uh, he has a little chapter in that book called Sharing, where he discusses the type of communication that goes on, a, a type of communication that goes on in talk shows. So he says that sharing is not only an expression of one's inner experiences and feelings, but it is also speech with a relational embrace, speaking that nurtures shared social purposes. In sharing, he says, one participates in and reaffirms that common importance of a present relationship. So this is the kind of uh, sharing that uh, Zuckerberg has in mind. This is the kind of cultural meaning of the word that he's, uh, that he's drawing on, even if he's not explicitly aware of it. So that's one way in which uh, the, the word sharing mystifies what's going on in social network sites. Another mechanism um, we can see if we um, kind of conceptualize how uh, we conceptualize Facebook's relationships with advertisers have uh, nearly finished on its um, websites. So for instance, uh, we've already established that when I do something on Facebook, I tell something to my friends, that's called sharing. Um, when I do that, Facebook um, gets a bunch of information, doesn't it, from me and about the interaction. And that's also um, uh, sharing. Facebook says that I'm sharing information with it. Uh, and when Facebook um, then uh, gives information, well, sells information, really, to advertisers, um, that is also called sharing. Uh, and we can see that, for instance, in um, Facebook's privacy policy. I mean, I don't bother to try and keep up with Facebook's privacy policy anymore. That would be a full-time job. You can feel confident that Facebook will not share your personal information with advertisers. Mm -hmm. So Facebook is sharing something that isn't even its. Um, and and, and I mean, I won't, okay, I won't now Unless go into you share it willingly. Right. According well, to them. According to them. I mean, according to their legalese, it's all fine. Um, I'm not just having a go at Facebook. This is from Google's uh, updated privacy policy from last year. We will share personal information with companies. So, um, so, uh, so sharing is also the word to describe the uh, sale of data between two commercial entities. Um, and what Facebook, I think, here is doing when Facebook says it won't share personal information with advertisers is, is there's a kind of an attempt, not necessarily a conscious one, but there's an attempt here to create a parallel between my relationship with my friends and Facebook's relationship with its advertisers, where, of course, that relationship is no, in no way uh, um, a parallel relationship. Um, so the, through the use of the word sharing, they're conflating my social activities and their business um, activities. Um, Okay, uh, I was just going to say, um, look at that once more. I will say that uh, what I have just talked about is all there in an article that got published earlier this year in New Media and Society. Um, and then I can say thank you. And then I did this rather cool thing, which means you can point your phone at the uh, screen and, and get straight to the article. <laughs> so thank you. Thank you.